Welcome everyone to uh, the Guidebook of the Week series. Uh, today we are going to look at the Wire Harness Assembly Guidebook, uh, which is good if you're in that type of industry, wire harnessing, so passing cables together, attaching uh, connectors, just being doing some big wire uh, assemblies. Uh, but it's also good with um, any operations where you already have a good working system that shows you how to do the job properly. And you're not looking for VKS to replace that existing system, but just uh, complement it in a certain way. Uh, so we will look at that. It might be as good as well if you're the kind of person that have some, uh, you know, some boxes full of tangled up cables in your house. Might be good to set up a good, uh, I mean, instructions on how to get that set up properly. So let's look. Yeah, for first, I just want to show you some examples of what wire harness can look like it can be as simple as this um, you still got to make sure you set up everything properly connect the right cables together you don't want to have a short circuit or it can be very very complex as you can imagine if you're doing this type of assembly you probably want to continue using that kind of system where you have a huge whiteboard with some drawings on it and sometimes you have pins uh, and screws and connectors and jigs already set up you don't want VKS to replace that because it's kind of like hard to convey that same complexity um, on just a smaller screen, you know, with no physical components on there. But VKS still has some, some of its advantages, which is tracking production, tracking serial numbers, letting the operator uh, communicate some, some quality problems, communicate some ideas they might have. And you can always use VKS to show some, some alerts on certain steps, uh, links to some of the other instructions as well. Uh, if you want. So let's dive in this guidebook right here. Uh, so we're doing production work today. Um, we are not continuing that work order. We're doing a new work order. So let's input that information in so we can use our um, scanner, maybe just scan a barcode of the piece of paper that is given to us that tells us the job that needs to be done. So let's input that in, hit save. And this number already exists. So we're going to pick a new one. Hopefully, we're good with this one. There we go. All right, so first step, not really anything on there. So let's move on. Uh, we start with a form, confirm these elements match, drawing number, drawing revision. So probably what's going on here is on your existing setup, you've got your drawings uh, placed in. And maybe on your paper that you have in your hand, you make sure that you've set up the good layout on there or directly on your instruction, uh, you could mention maybe that drawing number, that drawing revision, and then you make sure the match is here. Um, some of those indications uh, can be directly on your layout. You can present them directly on VKS as well to kind of like show you um, the meaning of the little symbols that you're gonna have on those drawings. Uh, moving along, verify the revisions match. Again, we could have put that form that we had exactly on this step. Um, you know, it's just to make sure the user really double checks that everything is, is correct before he messes uh, everything up. Uh, in this case here, we've got some links showing us uh, the drawing. So if you're on a tablet, it, like it works super well because then you can like zoom in on your finger and look at all the, the elements on there. Uh, so we got the drawings here and I think here we've got the isometric view of the product. There we go. What you could do is create a super generic work instruction that shows you how to do wire harness assembly and that you you just constantly reuse the same guidebook doesn't matter which product you assemble but the drawing links on there could be dynamic and provided by your ERP if you want so on the side of the instruction so in the element panel uh, when you integrate VKS with your ERP or maybe a PLM software, uh, when it sends over the work order information to VKS, it can provide a link to the proper drawing. So it doesn't matter um, it doesn't matter which product you are building. You always we use the same work instruction, but depending on what product it is, depending on what work order it is, the links will point to different drawings in that case. So it makes it so you don't have to maintain lots of different versions of the work instructions. Obviously, in that case, you won't be able to really go into specifics, uh, but still, it's a good way to get started fast. Uh, all right, so let's move on. Alert, please know that the step only shows an example of the assembly board. It's not the one you're going to use. Okay, so here, essentially, it tells the operator 
Leave Vika as there. Maybe as a reference, you can still use it if you want. Go on your board and do the actual assembly the way you are used to do it. Uh, pass the cable as per drawing. Ensure the cables are within tolerance, all that stuff. Now, while you're doing all this, um, you can still use VKS. Well, first, it's useful because you're, you're still tracking time of the assembly, even though you're not really interacting uh, with VKS during that time. But you can still interact with some of the standard forms that you have on the site. Um, so here I've got one to always suggest a process improvement. So again, I, there's an idea, there's an error on the, on the layout. I can just pop that up, describe my idea, take a picture, hit save, and it's sent to the continuous improvement team. Uh, or I could report a non-conformance, click on one of the form, it opens up, fill in the non-conformance detail, and it's tracked, logged in VKS, and it can notify the quality department. Uh, geez, I still have a hard time seeing with that white light. Uh, all right, let's go move on to the next one. Yeah, here, here I wanted to show you could reproduce. So let's say you, you run VKS on a huge TV, on a huge screen, um, and you build the instruction using the same screen, you could reproduce like where to put your cups and screws and jigs directly on your screen. Maybe you put a plexiglass on top and uh, replace the existing system that you have with something built in VKS. You could do this, uh, but I would advise to just start with the traditional way first and again, just use VKS uh, to supplement additional information. I install the predictive two, purple and red, install two tar apps where identified with droplets. So that thing could be showed again on your drawing, on your setup, um, or instead you could just might as well use VKS to, to, to show you the extra stuff to make sure people don't forget those. Uh, maybe in the beginning, everything's laid out on the, on the drawing, uh, but now every time you have certain quality issues and people forget to do certain steps, then more and more you make your instructions better, create a new revision, add a step really identifying where to put those tie wraps in that case. Uh, and let's say you're trying to apply like your heat shrink. You don't know how to do that. Let me move the screen right here. There you go. Well, on the side, you could use links that points to other work instructions that will show you how to do that stuff. So in that case, showing me how to apply the heat shrink if I don't know how to do that. That's a really simple one, but you can go uh, and link instructions that are much more detailed uh, if you want it. Again, the goal is that the, the operator is not lost uh, and has to go on the dashboard and find the right instruction in here. No, it's already all laid out on the side, ready to be opened. Uh, okay, all right. Scan the serial number. So again, you can still use VKS for traceability. Take out your scanner, scan the serial number that you just applied on your unit. So you have that tracked uh, in your system. Install the sleeve, install the six pin connector as per the indication below. So again, you can use VKS to convey that information. Maybe the operator already knows how to do that. Uh, maybe not, in which case he can just look at that step. Install the sleeve, install the four pin connector as per the indication below. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then if you click on it, it shows you exactly the color of the cable. So again, some of the annotations in VKS are pretty useful um, to really make sure there's no mistakes being done. Everything's superficial. Circle the harness in a loop and hang on the rack for the next operation. You do that, VKS cycles at the beginning, uh, counts one unit being produced, so you're tracking your operations, and then it's time for the second assembly until you're done. So I hope it helped you show um, it helped you show how you can use VKS to now replace anything, but just supplement what you're already doing. So you still use your existing board system, uh, but then using VKS, you track production, you track time, you gather productivity information, you let users contact the continuous improvement team if they have ideas. Uh, they can still track non-conformance problem and inform the quality department in that case. You're still tracking serial numbers. You're still providing links to all the relevant SOPs that you might have. Uh, so uh, so then, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Let's move on this. Um, it's not going to be me next week. I think it's going to be my, my colleague Shan or Spiro. So uh, until then, um, well, until then, we'll, we'll see you later, I guess.